Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Cary Grant and Irene Dunn in Mr. Blanding's Bilge's Dream House. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeling. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. No two stars have given so many performances that honestly rate the word classic as Irene Dunn and Cary Grant. And tonight, we've reunited this famous team in a comedy as timely as today's headlines. It's the RKO picture, Mr. Blanding's Bills His Dream House. You know, almost everyone has had a housing problem at some time or other, and the Blandings had their troubles even as you and I. In fact, they had so much trouble, their story became a hit motion picture. You know, you have your idea of a dream house, and your neighbor has another. But one thing is certain. Any well-run dream house will include a supply of the new bath size Lux toilet soap. Whatever the arguments about architecture, most people agree Lux soap is perfect. Now, here's the curtain for Mr. Blanding's Bill's His Dream House. Starring Cary Grant in his original screen role as Jim and Irene Dunn as Muriel. Like millions of other New Yorkers, Jim and Muriel Blandings and their two young daughters are cliff dwellers. Home to them is an apartment. Oh, adequate, but somewhat crowded. Not that Jim isn't doing well. He's a college graduate, makes $15,000 a year in the advertising business. Anyway, on this crisp September morning, Jim Blandings has just staggered out of bed and commenced a typical 7 o'clock ritual. You're looking for something, dear? Hmm? Oh, you're awake. I'm looking for my socks. Why don't you look in your sock drawer? That's where I found my underwear. Why don't you try your underwear drawer? I am in my underwear drawer now. (laughs) Oddly enough, it's full of underwear. Or yours. Mm. Well, socks just don't get up and walk away by themselves, Mm. dear. Muriel, now look. I thought we had it clearly understood that the four bottom drawers were yours and these two top drawers were mine. The closet. Huh? Uh, That's where they are. We put them in the closet. Uh, Put what in the closet? Your socks. Gussie and I decided that from now on, we'll keep them in a basket on the shelf. Oh, for heaven. Basket. Basket in the closet. Well, where is the basket? Right there on the shelf, dear. Under my hat boxes in the overnight bag. Oh. Oh, yeah. Jim, dear, I do wish you'd try to make a little more effort. Well, I'll try, dear. Now, look at that. Muriel. Muriel, maybe if you put the basket on top of the hat boxes instead of underneath the hat oh, now, boxes... Jim, Jim, I... just go out and tell Gussie to give you a nice cup of coffee. I'll try and get the girls out of the bathroom. Oh, thank you, Muriel. I'm sorry. I'll feel better after a cup of coffee. Oh, excuse me, Jim. My face cream. It's in the medicine cabinet. I'll be through shaving in a minute. It's all right. I can reach it. Ouch! Oh, oh. did you cut yourself? I cut myself every morning. I kind of look forward to it. <laughs> Let's see now. There's Betsy's vitamins. Oh, take your time, dear. I can spare the blood. Why don't you... Why don't you get an electric razor? You can't get used to them. That's silly. Bill Cole's been using an electric razor for years. He hasn't got my beard. Bill's beard is just as coarse and tough. I am not interested in discussing the grain and texture of Bill Cole's hair follicles before I've had my orange juice. All I said was, why don't you use an electric razor? Because I prefer the clean sweep of the tempered steel as it glides smoothly no over No advertising. My... Please, please, just hurry, dear. You'll no. be late for breakfast. Oh, shit. <clears throat> All right, girls. Who did it? Who tore a piece out of my morning newspaper? Well? I'm sorry, Father. It's part of my research for school. Oh, I see. Hmm. Another of Miss Stellwagen's so-called progressive projects. Now, huh? Jim, Jim, there just isn't any point in sending your children to an expensive school if you're going to undermine the teacher's authority in your own dining room. I am not undermining anything. 
I'm in the advertising business, and keeping abreast of the times is important to me. Baker, baker, baker. Uh, you drink your milk. Every time your father and I have a lively discussion, dear, it doesn't necessarily mean we're bickering. Miss Stellwagen says that advertising is crass commercialism in its lowest form. Oh, oh, she does, does she? Well, well perhaps your Miss Stellwagen is right. <laughs> perhaps I should quit this crass commercialism, which at this very moment is paying for your fancy tuition. Those extra French lessons, that progressive summer camp, to say nothing of the very braces on your back teeth. <laughs> Jim, I wish you wouldn't discuss money in front of the children. Why not? They spend enough of it. Baker, Baker, All right, Baker. girls, get your things now and run along. Yeah, let's go, Betsy. Goodbye, Daddy. <laughs> well, give my regards to Miss Stellwagon. Anyway, you're still the nicest father I've ever had. I'll get it, Gussie. <laughs> Hiya, kids. Bill, we haven't seen you in ages. Sorry, Billy, we gotta run. Oh. Well, good morning. Well, what are you doing here? Oh, just thought I'd stop by and return these sketches, Muriel. Coffee? Yeah, thanks. Now, personally, I think Funkhauser's two or three thousand dollars out of line. Of course, you could save that amount by not tearing out the living room wall. Hmm? What wall? What are you talking about? Who's Funkhauser? Oh, Funk Bunny Funkhauser, dear. Who? Well, you know that clever young interior decorator we met at the Collins cocktail party. Uh, you mean that young man with the open-toed sandals? <laughs> what no, about him? What about him? You know how long we've always said we must do something about fixing up this apartment. Well, Bunny has some simply darling ideas. Uh-huh. Uh, what kind of ideas? Well, I didn't want to bother you until I knew whether we could afford it or not, so I... How I... much? What's the point in asking how much, dear, until you know what you're going to get? I've seen Bunny Funkhauser. I know what I'm going to get. <laughs> Well, I think he's got some fairly interesting sketches here. Mm -hmm. Just look at this drawing, Jim. Mm -hmm. uh, here, here's how Bunny sees our living room. Isn't mm -hmm. it charming? Mm -hmm. What's that thing there? A shoe shine stand? No. It's a cobbler's bench, dear. Oh, oh. You see, the whole room's colonial. Break front, hook rug, student's lamp, pie cooler, and over here, uh, a Martha Washington desk. Hmm. Where do I keep my powdered wig? <laughs> Well, I think it's perfect. It's mm. us. Bunny says we're very American, very grassroots, very blueberry pie. Oh, well, don't look at me, Jim. Bunny said it. Mm. How much is all this going to cost? Well, $7,000. $7,000? Well, that includes tearing out the wall, but I quite agree with Bill. I, I oh, don't you do? Well, you're some lawyer, Bill. A defenseless woman without the slightest conception of the value of a dollar asks for advice, and the next minute you've got it tearing out walls. Seven thousand dollars. I wouldn't put seven cents into this broken down rat trap. How can you talk that way, Jim? This is our home. Why, well, Joan was practically born in this apartment. That does not make it a national shrine. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute. I thought I was doing you a favor. And you were, Bill. He was just showing you how you could save three thousand dollars by simply not tearing off the wall. Well, I could save seven thousand by not doing anything at all. Well, then, that's that, isn't it? Seven thousand dollars. Blueberry pie. Huh. Uh, have you seen my hat, Muriel? It's in the hall closet, dear, where it always is. I'll get it for you. Jim! Jim, help! Oh, good morning, Mr. Bland. Oh, hello, Mary. Well, I guess the boss will want to see the layouts on Wham Hand. They're here on your desk, Mr. Blanding. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh... When you've got the whim, say wham. Oh, my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a grand slam in ham, try wham. Oh, Mary, I didn't really write that, did I? A man's got to make a living, Mr. Blandings. Uh, well, maybe Miss Stellwagen's right. Hmm? Oh, nothing. It's just a private joke between me and whoever's going to be my analyst. <clears throat> Mary, tell me, would you spend $7,000 to tear out somebody else's walls? Would I what? Well, especially when for a few thousand more you could fix up a nice old place someplace. You know, somewhere like uh, Connecticut, maybe. Yeah. And have the kind of dream house you've always wanted. Well, uh, frankly, I never Mary, had... Mary, get me the phone numbers of a few of those suburban real estate men. Oh, and call Mrs. Blandings. Tell her to keep this weekend open for a nice drive out to the Connecticut countryside. <laughs> They just drove up, Pop. That couple from New York, Mr. and Mrs. Blandings. Good, good. Uh, what place is you going to show them, Pop? Oh, three or four, son. And then I'll show them the Hackett place. Oh, no. Not the old Hackett place. The old, old Hackett place. 
Son, you ain't been learning much about the real estate business. But, but Pop, the Hackett place, it, it's falling apart. It, it leans. Hmm. Mighty quaint old place, son. Just the thing for the blending. And we bought it, Bill. It's ours. Well, <laughs> some steel, huh? Uh, steel is an understatement. Swindle might be a little more appropriate, huh? You've been taken to the cleaners, my friend, and you don't even know your pants are off. Oh, darling, I told you. I said we ought to consult Bill before we buy it. Well, what's so wrong with this deal? $10,000 for 50 acres and only 1500 for the house. That's $200 an acre. $100 an acre is standard top gouge price to city slickers. When the natives sell it to each other, it's around 40 or less. 40 Jim! The man's entitled to a fair profit. Not 284%. Now, we're going to write this fellow Hackett and tell him he can... We'll do no such thing. You just don't understand business. You mean extortion. Jim, dear, now, maybe Bill's right. I, I, oh, I... Now, now, just a minute. Let me explain something to both of you. For 15 years, I've been cooped up in this four-room cracker box. Just getting shaved here entitles a man to the purple heart. <laughs> well, that still doesn't make this Hackett place a good buy. Now, now, look, Bill. Muriel and I have found what I'm not ashamed to call our our dream house. Why, it's it's like a fine painting. You buy it with your heart, not with your head. You don't ask how much was the paint, how much was the canvas. You look at it and you say, Ah, it's beautiful. I want it. And if it costs a few more pennies, you pay it and gladly, because you love it. And you don't measure the things you love in dollars and cents. Well, anyway, that's the way I feel about it. Well, it's your money, I suppose. No. And when I sign those papers on Saturday, I can look the world in the face and say it's mine. My house. My home. My acres. Our house, darling. Our home. Our acres. Hmm. My, it's a windy day, isn't it? Well... This is it, Bill. Hmm? The dream house on Nightmare Alley. And no remarks. The house just needs someone to love it, that's all. It's a good thing there are two of you, one to love the house and one to hold it up. Jim. Jim, look. There's something blowing off the roof. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Oh, it looks like, like shingles. Well, what did your engineer say when he checked that roof? Our engineer? Who needs engineers? This isn't a train, you know. Say, that house is moving. I just saw it move. <laughs> This house has been standing since the second year of the Continental Congress. You take one look at it and shingles start to drop. Now, look, do me one favor, will you? I've got a client. He's a crackerjack structural engineer, Joe Apollonio. Oh, yeah. Now, he... Well, I'll be right back, Muriel. Just, just want to measure that fireplace again. Now, uh, not that it's any of my business, Muriel, but uh, how are you and Jim paying for this place? Well, we're cashing in our government bonds, and Mr. Hackett's taking a $6,000 mortgage. Hmm. Well, it could be worse. And as long as you and Jim love it so much... Help! Help! Jim! What's the matter? Where are you? I fell through the floor! (laughs) Bill, I think you'd better get in touch with Mr. Apollonio. That's why we've come to you, Mr. Sims. After Mr. Apollonio saw the house, we got our own expert, Mr. Murphy, and then Mr. Gillis, but they all said the same thing. Yeah, tear it down. Well, as an architect, I'm inclined to agree with them. Of course, you can remodel, but uh, for what it would cost you, why, you can have a fine new house. Hmm, a new house, huh? Yes, something like uh, like this, for instance. Now, in this sketch no, here... No, 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 I, I don't think we're at all ready to commit ourselves. Oh, no, no. But if, if, if we were to consider building, I can tell you there's one thing we'd have to have, Mr. Sims. Plenty of closets. Well, yes, if I might uh, make a suggestion... And bathrooms. Each bedroom must have at least one bathroom. You see, Mr. Sims, our problem is... Now, here, 
I made a drawing of exactly what I mean, Mr. Sims. A little playroom for the basement, you see. Uh, nothing tremendous, just a little something to... And do. I've always wanted a sewing room, Mr. Sims. Mm. A little utility room upstairs where I could be alone and sew or, or sulk on a rainy afternoon. Yes, but I think I'd better and point out... And here off the kitchen, a little flower sink with a stone floor and shelves for vases and gardening things. And maybe a little closet. Uh, uh, sure, well, sure. Why, well, why not? Now, over here... We my can, dear we can... Mr. Blendings, now in the first place, you've got the upstairs about three times as big as the downstairs. <laughs> Hey, you see, Muriel? It's all those bathrooms. Nonsense. It's all those closets. And by extending the breakfast room, you've eliminated the possibility of any stairs going up to the second floor. <laughs> well, no stairs? Oh. Now, now, is it absolutely necessary for each of your daughters to have her own room with two closets and yes. a private yes, bath? Yes, yes. You see, our daughters are approaching womanhood. Yeah, well, I didn't realize they were approaching it quite so fast. <laughs> Now, what about that silly flower sink or that sewing room? That I could go. I beg your pardon. What we need is a, a major savings. Now, a simple bathroom, Mrs. Blandings, costs about $1,300. Now, if you could do with just no, one less... No, no, I refuse to endanger the health of my children in a house with less than four bathrooms. For $1,300, they can live in a house with only three bathrooms and rough it. <laughs> Look, suppose I go ahead with some preliminary plans and then we can get together in about a week's time. Yes, you do that, Mr. Sims. But just don't forget, we've got to hold it down under $10,000. That, I can tell you right now, is impossible. Oh. Oh, well, I, I guess we're not going to quibble about a few pennies one way or another. <laughs> oh, by the way, Mr. Blandings, have you anything in mind as to how you'd like the old place taken down? Yeah. Why don't we just go out there and blow on it? <laughs> Bill, just in time. Muriel and I are going over the plane. In here, Bill, in the dining room. Hi. Well, so you have torn down the old house, huh? Uh, most practical thing we ever did. Uh-huh. Uh huh. How much did that cost? Uh, well, fourteen hundred dollars. Now, never mind, Bill. I bet we've got the nicest vacant lot in the state of Connecticut. <laughs> well, Muriel, he's done it again. Uh, who's done? Well, what's eating you? What did I do? Now, once, just once, why don't you come to me and find out if it's all right? If it's legal before you run yourself smack into another jam. Oh, Jim, what's happened? What's Bill talking about? I don't know. He won't tell me. All you did was tear down a house in which another man happens to own a mortgage without first getting his written permission. Well, what's that got to do? No. Yeah. Oh. And in such cases, the mortgagee can demand full payment of said mortgage. Oh, Jim. And Mr. Hackett so demands 6,000 clams. Oh, my. Six thousand dollars. Hmm. Well, I, I guess I can turn in my insurance policies oh, or no, something. Oh, no, Jim, no, you can't do that. Well, why not? Well, if anything should happen, the children would be left unprotected. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> no, of course you're not. Well, I'll see the boys at the bank. Uh, you can put up your insurance as collateral. If necessary, I'll sign a personal note. Uh-huh. Uh, thanks, Bill. Sure. Well, I've got to run along. Good night, Muriel. Good night, Bill. Uh, I'll let you know what the bank says, Squire. What a wonderful friend. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, what's with all this kissing all of a sudden? He comes in, you kiss him. He goes out, you kiss him. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, just because a man is helpful in a business way, he doesn't give him extracurricular privileges with my wife. <clears throat> That's a fine thing to say about a friend of 15 years. Well, if he were 15, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> He's 41. Every time he shakes my hand, he kisses you. Would you prefer it the other way round? Uh, well, why is he always hanging around? Why doesn't he go out and get married or something? Because he can't find another girl as pretty and sweet and wholesome as I am. Mm. Oh, darling, let's not be silly about this. It isn't Bill that's upsetting you. It's the house. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Now, Muriel, do you think it's worth all this? Of course it is. It isn't a house we're building, Jim. It's a home for ourselves and our children and maybe our children's children. Yeah, each with two closets and a private bath. <laughs>